We are now looking at a teaching video on certs. So we look at point one, the properties of certs. In part A, we have square A multiplied to square A. So the property will give you a result of A. Of course, if you think in terms of indices, that is basically a to the power of half times a to the power of half, where we have the same basis and a product of these two terms, then we add the indices together. Half plus half is basically 1. So a to the power 1 is a. So when we look at thirds, and we can think also in terms of indices. For b, we have square a times square b. That will give a square root a times b. Again, if we think in terms of the rules of indices, I will have a to the power of half times b to the power of half. Since the indices are the same and we have the product of the two terms, then a must multiply to b raised to the same power half. That will result in the square root of a b. Next, for part c, we will have a divided by b and then square rooted. So this is when we have square root a divided by square root b. Again, thinking in terms of the rules of indices, we have a to the power half divided by b to the power half because of the indices which are the same then we have a divided by b raised to the power of half and that will become square root of a over b a over b next for part d we have square root a as the first term in the first set of bracket square root a also the first term but in the second set of bracket. Now, square root b is the second term in the first set of bracket, and square root b is the second term in the second set of bracket. Here, we talk about difference. Here, we talk about sum. So the result will be just difference of two squares. So square root a squared minus square root b squared. The result will be a minus b. Next, we have square root a plus square root b bracketed and squared. So we we'll use this result square root a squared plus 2 times the square root a times square root b plus square root b squared. The result would be when I square root the when I square the square root a, I get a. And here I'll get a plus two square root of a b. And lastly, the third term is just a b. So that result for f will be similar to this except for the sign here. So I have a minus 2 square root of ab plus b. So these are some properties of certs. For point 2, where we look at uh, rationalization. So these are what we call radical or radical expression. 
and when we want to simplify it by that I mean removing the sub form from the denominator the whole process is called rationalization so rationalization So to rationalize this radical expression, I will take 1 over square root a multiplied to square root a over square root a. You can see it didn't change the value of this uh, expression here because square root a over square root a is still 1. 1 multiplied to 1 over square root a is exactly what I started out with. But 1 times square root a will give me a result of square root a over square root a times square root a will be just a. You can see here in the denominator, I will not have a third form anymore. For part B, I will have 1 over square root A plus square root B. In the previous case, I'm dealing with one third form in the denominator. But in part B, I have two. And uh, it's considered as two terms. So the way to do it is to consider the difference of two squares. So I will have to look for an expression multiplied to this to give me just rational expression. So I'll take square root A minus square root B multiplied to the numerator as well as the denominator. So the result would be square root A minus square root B over A minus B. Next, for part C, the difference compared to part B is the, in the sign in the operator. Here I have minus, here I have plus. So it is just a difference of what to be multiplied to the numerator and denominator of this expression. So I choose square root a plus square root b to multiply to the numerator as well as to the denominator. So the result will be square root a plus square root b over a minus B. So the process is called rationalization and it means removing any third form from the denominator. Point three, we are looking at the phrase that conjugate thirds. Now, what we understand is that the product of the conjugate third will produce a rational number. So we have indeed seen conjugate pairs. In the previous example, where we had, say, square root A minus square root B, to ensure that there is no third form in the denominator, I will have to multiply this by square root a plus square root b. So since the product is going to be a rational number, these two are called conjugate thirds. Next we look at some simplification of thirds. Now these three are the most common ones that you encounter. So for part a, where we have a times square root c 
plus b times square root c. So the common factor is square root c. What we'll do then is to take a plus b, the result multiplied to square root c. So we can actually add them up as though you have ax plus bx, like in the algebraic form. Next, whenever we have expression that we can uh, simplify further, like here, a squared, when I square root that, I get a. So we're talking about perfect squares in the square root. Then we deal with those. So square root a squared is a, but the other part, square root b, remains as it is. So this is making sure that whatever I'm trying to square root will be the simplest possible without any uh, perfect square as its factor. Here, using one of the rules of the thirds, we have square root of a b squared divided by a b. After cancellation, I will just have square root of b. So we can think in terms of the quotient of a b squared and a b. So we have come to the end of this video. Review this as often as you can.